right. Hey, everybody. I'm super, super excited. Um, today's one of those days where at least I showered, but I didn't get ready. And I broke three nails and my color is starting to peel off. It's just one of those days. But I'm so excited. So um, I originally found Nicole um, from a post that I saw that she um, went from being paid as a ruby in February to promoting to Presidential Diamond last month. And so if you know anything about how this business works, you know, a ruby on average has about $4,000 um, in group volume and a Presidential Diamond has about oh, $100,000 in group volume. So that's a pretty big difference from uh, March, April, May, three months worth of work. And so Nicole's story I thought was so inspiring and, you know, she's kind of just awesome. And so I wanted to take the time to interview her and let you guys get to know her a little bit and just hope that her story can inspire you um, to know that you can do this. So Nicole, why don't you start off by just sharing in your words, like how you found it works, how you got started and a little bit of your story. Okay, so first I want to say that um, I'm a mom of four, and so I'm hiding in my bathroom. Okay, so it, it shows you that, um, we're, you know, we're all the same. We all put our pants on the exact same way. I'm no different than you are. Um, my husband has to watch my kids so I can lock myself in the bathroom to do this, okay? So, um, okay, a little bit about me. I joined this business exactly two years ago this month. Um, my enroller is Stacy Galligan, and I met her through a mobs group. I was fired from my career at um, MGM. I'm from Las Vegas, so I was an accounting manager, and um, I was fired, and I was devastated. I didn't, um, I, you know, I didn't know anything else but that, and so I was kind of just venturing out and trying to do all these things, and so I decided that I wanted to open a bakery, and so I had um, gone in this mobs group, and um, you know, I was just looking for people to give me coupons so that I could, you know, host them at this party I was having. And so Stacy came over and she gave me this card and, you know, it had, have you ever tried this crazy wrap? And of course, like I asked her, you know, what is this? And she told me it's, oh, it's this cloth you put on your body and it tones, tightens and firms in 45 minutes. And I don't, I'm not kidding. I laughed in her face. Like looking back now, I felt so bad because I was probably so rude, but I, I thought she was kidding. <laughs> so, um, she added me on Facebook and then like two weeks later, my boyfriend and I at the time were going to the Dominican Republic and I was like, man, I need to tone tight and firm in as little as 45 minutes. So I bought some products from her. I came back. She's posting about the Ruby bonus because at the time we had one and I was so desperate for money that $500 sounded amazing to me. And so I signed up with a credit card right then and there. Even though I was so excited, I did nothing the first, like, because I signed up at the end of the month, so I did nothing that first week. Um, so my first check was a big, fat goose egg. I made no money. Um, and then my enroller enrolled somebody and placed her under me, and that girl completely took off. She signed, like, 17 customers in her first week, and I'm super red and super competitive. And so when I saw her being successful, like, she was literally leaving me in the dust, so I put pedal to the metal. I went Ruby in three weeks. I went Emerald in two more months. And then I went diamond, um, a few months after that. So I had success. Um, and then, you know, my husband and I have been, um, well got married or, um, so he became my husband, but we, um, we were pregnant and, um, we really wanted that double diamond income. And the problem was that I started to kind of like slow down because I got into this groove and I got comfortable I did hit double a few months later, and then um, this is kind of where my story takes this turn. I gave birth to my son in April of last year, and about two weeks later, they found two blood clots, and I was in the hospital for two weeks. Um, they told my husband that I wasn't going to make it. Um, the blood clots had moved to my lungs. I had um, pneumonia, a collapsed lung. I um, had an infection in my other lung. I was on a breathing machine. It was to a point where the antibiotics were not working. And I remember texting Stacy because I was promoting to double that month. Um, and that was May of last year. So I remember texting Stacy and telling her like, Hey, can you just help my team get to double diamond? Because I don't know if I'm making it out of this hospital and my husband really needs this money. So it was just really, it was really emotional. And, um, Stacy and I, you know, she worked with me every day. I was posted up in the hospital, hooked up to all these machines, and then um, I made it out, obviously. 
which was fantastic. I promoted to double that month. And then, um, you know, I was just plagued with like postpartum depression, PTSD, um, everything that kind of comes along with these traumatic events. And I gave up and I really, um, at the time my enroller was pushing for her next promotion. And I sort of was just like, well, she needs it. So she'll get me there. And I gave up on her. And when that happened, not only did um, that put a strain obviously on my team, because when I gave up on Stacy, I gave up on myself and I gave up on them. And guess what happened? My team gave up on themselves too. So we all sort of just like kind of fell apart. Um, I, there were moments when I stopped running my auto ships. So there were months that I wasn't even paid at all. Um, later on around, I want to say October of last year, they finally figured out what was wrong with me. I had cervical cancer. And so at 27 years old, they told me that I would never have another child again. Um, and so that was just, those were just some tough things to kind of deal with. Um, I did go back to work, working as an accountant and I worked, I've worked since I really started this business. So I was able to start it works and I got an accounting job at the same time. So throughout this whole experience, I was still working a full-time job. So everyone who's out there, that's like, Oh man, I'm so busy. I have a full-time job. I understand that. I'm a presidential diamond right now and I still work a full-time job. So I know exactly how hard it is to kind of schedule this business and to have four kids and to, you know, to have all of that. So I sympathize and I understand, but at the same time, when you want the dream, you make it happen. So, um, and this, my husband and I had used my last diamond check, um, to plan a trip to Costa Rica. And on that trip, we found out for sure that my cancer was approaching stage two and they were going to do an immediate, like an immediate hysterectomy when I got back. So, um, you know, we were talking and we were trying to figure out what we wanted to do. And my husband was like, well, why don't we, um, why don't we start it works back up, you know, run your auto ship again. And, um, it was crazy because this girl entered my business in December, so around the same time. And all she wanted was probiotics. And she was the first customer I had signed in probably like six months. And so I placed her under my husband because we wanted a check and, you know, he was kind of like right there. So we got him to commission qualified in January. She, um, transferred over to a distributor and she was that runner. She, um, took my husband to Emerald and in January he was paid higher than I was. <laughs> so my husband was paid as an Emerald and I was paid as a Ruby still. So we kind of just got a game plan together. Um, so in January and in February, you know, we kind of got that game plan, but like I said, I've had success and then I've had failure, like complete failure where everybody literally stopped working. <laughs> so I know exactly what that looks like. Um, so that's just a little bit of background about how I got to that spot. So. Okay. So I kind of wrote down a few things that I wanted to touch based on that I think are awesome. And I think this is something that. I think everybody is going to have to realize for themselves at one point or another. And I know I experienced this. Um, the month that I went diamond was the same month that my enroller went diamond. And I just remember all month long, like all I wanted and all I had my sights set on was diamond. But because my upline only needed me to be an emerald, that's all she helped me get. You know what I mean? And so when you said um, how you kind of thought that Stacy, like, oh, she needs me to promote to triple or whatever for her to go presidential or whatever it was, um, how you said she'll get me there. Did that happen or what happened with that? Well, so um, the month I actually went double, obviously I was in the hospital for two weeks. And so, you know, Stacy and I were talking a lot and I knew that she, I was the double for her presidential. And so I felt like I probably could have worked harder but I use being in the hospital as an excuse because I thought, I hate saying this, but the truth is I kind of felt entitled because I kind of felt like she was working so hard for this promotion. So I knew at the end of the day, they, her and her upline who was going for ambassador, were going to make it happen. And they, they made it happen. But the next month they moved on from me and guess what happened? I crumbled. And the girl that was underneath me, she promoted and I fell apart. So I think that, yes, you know, there are times in this business where we have to build somebody because I've done it. I think Jocelyn, you've obviously done it where you're going and going, and going, and you have to build someone, but know that that's not going to last and know that they're going to move on to the next person. Cause there's somebody under you in your downline that's working their ass off 
and they're going to move on to that person. So that feeling of entitlement or that feeling of they need you, it doesn't last very long because um, there's always somebody else. So I learned that hard way. Yeah. So I think the most important thing is to realize I'm like our success in this business isn't going to be given to us by anyone in our upline or our downline. Even if we have somebody on our downline take off, you still got to build your own legs. You've still got to do that work. You've got to get yourself commission qualified and get those customers. So um, that's something that I really love because if I was waiting for my upline to help place me, to help me get to double diamond, I still would not be double diamond. Um, and so I, I really wanted to touch base on that. Um, the next thing I kind of wanted to talk to you about, hold on, I've got to find whoever didn't mute. I was so nervous for this. I took notes so that I didn't like ramble off and like <laughs> ramble off on like some side, you know, conversation. <laughs> okay. So, um, oh, I started losing my train. So I think I really want to just kind of touch base. You were only paid as a Ruby in January and February. And that's when you kind of decided like, okay, like let's turn my auto shipment back on and let's make this work. Right. So we turned my auto ship back on in January and, um, I was still like, I had a somewhat of a game plan. I, my goal was never triple. I wanted to get my double back. Um, and that's one of those things where I guess I just didn't really believe in myself and I didn't really think I was capable. I thought that like, like double had always just, once I reached Ruby that $500 a month, double had been like double because double diamond is like full-time income. It's like $5,000 a month. It's like 60 grand a year. That's like a full-time position and I'm an accountant. And so that's, pretty much exactly what I make. And I was like, I could double my accounting income. And so double diamond was like this big, huge accomplishment. And so I guess I never really looked past that. Mm -hmm. And so I just thought, okay, double, that's where I want to be. So to get double, I needed to kind of, um, I hate saying the word rebuild because we're always supposed to be building, but I, I kind of needed to um, fix some things that kind of crumpled. Yeah. So um, I had enrolled, I had enrolled a few distributors in January and a few distributors in um, February, but obviously I had no team page. I had no team chats. I, I had no organization whatsoever. And so I didn't really help those people as much as I probably should have. So I didn't regain much of anything other than Ruby. And it wasn't until March. And um, I wrote down that. So in March, we were 12 distributors and $20,000 on the other side of my leg for me to get to triple. And it was, um, it was Araceli. It was a girl in my downline who came to me and she said, Hey, I'm, I, you know, I'm going to reach to this rank. And, um, when I saw that she was really taking off, it's like teamwork makes the dream work. And she just re-inspired me and she happened to be on my husband's leg. And so that's when I was like, man, we can really do this. Like, you know, even though double, double was inches away, I just had some, I just needed volume. The, the structure was there, but we had no customers. And so that also plays another factor in that, like you guys can have this huge team, but if you have no customers, you're not making any money. And so, it, it, you know, this business is a balancing act between teammates and customers. And so, you know, we kind of have to cultivate and rub those relationships. Both of them are equally important. So, um, so yeah, so starting March, I, we needed 12 new teammates and we needed about $20,000 on, um, the other side. I had the girl under me who my enroller was helping because she was running. She was set, you know, she was set, she was going places, um, so I didn't really have to worry about her, but it was the other side, you know, there was nothing going on over there. And that's why I was only paid as a Ruby because of all of those people, they didn't even make up $2,000 in sales. So I had to, we had to make up quite a bit of volume. So that's kind of what, what our needs were in March. And it wasn't until like March 2nd, what happened was my enroller has a team page and she posted on that team page about her goals. And, um, she had, I knew she had moved on from me, but I didn't really know. And when she announced on her team page, what her goals were, her goals were to take the girl beneath the girl that was enrolled under me to triple. And that's when I knew that I was being left behind. I was completely erased off somebody's chart. Nobody was looking at us. No one was looking at the team. And so that's when I made that decision. Like, you know what? No, they're not going to leave me in the dust. I'm not going to be left behind. I just beat cancer. Like, I am, I can do this. And so I had to make that decision for myself. 
So that's kind of what happened. It, it didn't really click that I could be a triple until I, I knew I got erased off somebody's chart. Like, when I knew that I was nowhere to be found, then I was like, oh man, time to make it happen. Yeah, so. it really stresses and reiterates the whole point that nobody wants you to promote as bad as you do. Yep. Okay, so um, let's talk a little bit about, um, so you needed how many distributors again? 12, 12 distributors and $20,000 worth of loyal customers. So let's talk a little bit about the things, the action steps that you were doing um, to help talk to enough people to make that happen. What things were you doing to, to get those customers and distributors? Okay, so the first thing that I did is I actually had a girl who was, um, so if you guys have ever pulled out a triple chart, it's a double who was the girl my enroller was helping me. I had a diamond who was going to be um, my husband and then another diamond. Well, that other diamond actually needed six. And if I could have used her, then I obviously, if I had to go to her. She kind of stopped when I stopped. And so I know we always say like, don't um, revive a dead lake, but sometimes I think that we forget to ask people. And so I just went to her and I said, Hey, um, so-and-so, you are six people away from diamond. The team that's under you looks like, you know, they want it and they're working. I think they just need a little bit of the guidance. Like I know that I had life happening to me. Do you want to get back in this with me? And she had been running her auto ship, but she, like I said, she was paid as a, um, I think she was paid as a distributor. And so she was like, yeah, I want this. So, um, she got with all the people that were under her and she was like, Hey, I'm going to run. I've taken long enough off this business. Do you want to run with me? And that, that spark, it, I, it just sort of like, I got lucky. It sort of fell into place. So the girl who was her Emerald was like, yes, I'm in. And the girl who was her Ruby was like, yes, I'm in. And so for her, um, her team uh, signed half of the distributors that we needed. So she got herself charted to Diamond which left us, me and my husband, only six on like his side. So um, the first thing I did was obviously get, I pulled my charts out, I organized myself, and then I got with the people that I thought were going to be in promoting spots, and I just asked them. Um, so, you know, obviously that you know, made it easier. There were, there were some people who were like, yeah, I'll run an auto ship, but I'm not, I'm not going to post or I'm not going to whatever. So I knew that those were places that we were going to have to place customers. But the first thing I did was just get organized figured out who was going to be in what space. And then after that, I delegated. So I basically went to, I'm going to use my husband for an example. So I went to my husband's chart and I went to who was going to be his Emerald, which was um, this girl, Araceli, who just amazing rock star. And I split things up with her. I said, okay, you worry about this Ruby and I'll worry about this Ruby. Then I went to that Ruby I was supposed to worry about. And I said, Hey, you worry about your top line. And I'll worry about your executive. And then I went to the executive and I said, hey, you worry about this one person and I'll worry about this one person. And so what ended up happening is there were all these different people working on really about $800 in sales and that was it. So it made them feel less overwhelmed. And we've continued to use that method every single month and every month we've had huge promotions on our team. So um, I, we, like I said, we did that with everyone and it made them feel, um, like I said, less overwhelmed and it gave them something to focus on. Um, and some of our big leaders like me and the girls that were going diamond or whatever, you know, they had just two or three people to worry about. And so everyone had like two people themselves and one other person. So that was, that made a big, big difference. It was much easier to tackle volume when I wasn't the only one having to tackle it. It was that sort of layered leadership type style. So there was that. Then the next thing I did is I went to all of the boxes that were on my chart and I went, we went to the team as a whole, went to all those loyal customers that were already signed. And we just asked them, Hey, we noticed you haven't run an auto ship in X amount of time, or you have X amount of perk points or, um, you know, you just finished your auto ship or whatever the case may be. And we asked them if they wanted to do another 30 day challenge or a 90 day challenge. Um, we asked them uh, if they'd like to use their perk points in conjunction, like let's say they were running um, an auto ship for wraps. We asked them if they'd like to use their perk points to try the defining gel. So we tried to find things that they could use their perk points on that was complementary to their auto ship so they didn't shut that auto ship off. 
So that's how we were able to like build some extra volume. So we did that first, probably in the first um, four or five days, that first week, we really spent on working on the structure we already had in place. That kind of left us with an idea of what we had left. So then from there, um, we, I, my husband was, went back through my messenger all the way back to 2015 and messaged every single person that had not signed with me yet. Um, and in that process, we found that a lot of people, one, they never reached their goals that they thought they were going to reach on their own. So we were able to help them there. Um, two, a lot of them had been following my journey because even though I wasn't posting about it works, uh, they knew I was in the hospital and they knew I was struggling. So they were still following me. And so, um, you know, I kind of let myself be open and kind of vulnerable. And I know that's really scary, but the, the truth is, is that people want to follow you. That people want to connect with you on much more than just some social media level. Like they, they want to feel like they know who you are. And so being vulnerable and opening myself up, allowed for that to happen. And so we went through all the, all the people, basically my hundreds list, the people, this was what was really revolutionary for us. The people who said no, we offered them free product to throw a wrap party. And so we would say, okay, well, you know, we got a lot of like, well, I don't have the money right now. And I know that we all get that answer, many of us. And so we went to them and we said, okay, well, how would you like some free samples? And of course, they're like, oh my gosh, I would love some free samples. What do I have to do? So we said, all you have to do is get together a few friends. We'll come over, we'll bring everything, and we'll just throw a party. Some of the parties were online because I'm in Vegas. Some of my customers are all over the United States. So we would do online parties and we would combine them. So Sally said, yeah, I'll throw an online party. I'll invite four friends. And Mary said she'll invite four friends. We ended up having a party on, an online party on Friday night with 50 people. We did have some requirements. Their four friends had to interact. They had to share. They had to comment because how Facebook works is the more people interact on your event and the more people outside of your event see it. So that attracted more people in. Um, so those parties were really successful. We learned um, very quickly that your business is so much more than just posting on social media. Um, when I was working the business before, like prior to this time, I did a lot of parties and those really worked for me. And so I kind of just got back into the exact same thing that I knew worked. So, um, you know, your business is like, it's layered and it needs multiple different things to kind of draw people in. And you guys, not everybody is a social media person. Some people want to see you face to face. Some people want to see you just like this. Um, we did have some Zoom parties and they would all hop on and we would do a live demo right here. So we used Zoom, we used Facebook Live, we used Facebook events. Instagram, um, it's kind of hard to have a party, but we were able to pull people from Instagram onto Facebook by offering them, oh, would you like, um, you know, five days of free greens if they didn't want to wrap? Or we love the probiotic in my house and so we would cut off like five days of the probiotic and offer that to them. So. It's not like you guys are giving away hundreds of dollars worth of stuff. It's all inexpensive and it gives them an opportunity to try something and they give you something in return. Those parties were gold because once one person threw one, we would go to the next person and we would say, Hey, can you throw a party? Would you like to try a free wrap? Um, we threw a lot of face to face parties, but we were very consistent. We kind of pulled out a calendar and my husband and I were like, all right, we're going to do Wrap Wednesday because um, my enroller Stacy through Wrap Wednesday. So, you know, we work full time, and so it's hard for us to kind of do things on the weekdays. So we would send people over to Stacy's house, and so that's why I say teamwork makes the dream work. If you can't throw a wrap party, maybe a sideline sister is, and you guys can work together. So we were able to do that, um, but we had at least two to three in person opportunities for our potentials to go to all over the city. And then we also had twice a week where they could be on some sort of online platform, whether that be Facebook Live or a Facebook event or a Zoom. Um, so we had those opportunities. And then once a week, we to gather the rest of those distributors, we utilized um, my upline does a potential distributor Zoom. And so basically, it's just like this. All the potentials get on. We talk about the business. It's quick, short, 30 minutes. And so... They hop on and they come back to me and they'd be like, oh my gosh, I love it. Or I'm not ready or 
whatever the case may be. We have helped a lot of people pre-sale um, just in the sense that, you know, we, we help them with posts and how to talk to people. So that's been really helpful for us. We actually signed more than 12 people in March. We, um, we brought on 20 new teammates. So that made me realize like, okay, wow, we could, we could be so much more than just triple. So I think a lot of those consistent activities made it easier for our potentials to know where to go. They knew that if they miss wrap Wednesday one week, they could go to wrap Wednesday the next week, or they could go to wrap Friday, or they could go to the online party on Monday. So it was just being very, very consistent. I need a schedule because I have a full-time job. So that consistency really helped with me as well. So those were some of those action things that we did that really changed our business. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah. So one thing I wanted to ask also, I mean, we touched base on in-person, online, um, potential distributor Zooms. How often would you say every day you were posting on social media? Oh, for sure. So um, I can't remember who I learned this from, but I learned this from someone else. They, um, especially on Instagram, because people come on at different times. So I would post a picture of like me holding $300. And I would, you know, not my face, just literally 300 bucks. And I would say, what would $300 do for you? And I would post it at like nine in the morning, 11 in the morning, one in the morning and four in the morning. I'd post it. I'd give it like an hour or two. I'd message all those people and I would delete it. And then I'd post it again and message all those people and delete it. So there are some posts that you're just like, man, this is gold. You guys use them over and over again because the people who are on at nine in the morning are not the same people who are on at noon. And they're not the same people who are on at 11 o'clock at night. So you're seeing a totally different audience. And so I really use that on Instagram a lot. I typically post about six to 10 times a day. But if you go to my Facebook, you wouldn't see that. And it's because um, I use Facebook lists. I learned that from Ashley Sinclair. How that works is um, you create a list of all your potential loyal customers. And when you post a post and you sign it to that list, it sends it to just those people. So it's more like direct marketing kind of. And so that really helped because I, f I feel like they were seeing more of my posts that were directed just towards them. So even though you guys wouldn't, if you go to my page, you wouldn't see, you'd see like maybe four or three, I'm still posting. Now, like I said, I work a full-time job. So I post first thing in the morning when I wake up, I post when I'm done dropping my kids off of school. I post on a bathroom break. I post at lunch on another bathroom break when I get off work after dinner and when I go to bed. So those are all times that like we all have the same, you know, it takes like two seconds to post. So, um, I, I did a lot of my, uh, talking conversations during my lunch period because I, like I said, work a full-time job. I think focused work is a gold mine. Give yourself a power hour. I think that gives you something very strategic to, to do. And it doesn't leave you. How many of us have time to scroll on social media for hours a day? Like none of us have time for that. So if you give yourself time constraints, it's like going to a regular job. Okay. You have to be at work at nine in the morning and you have to do this by 10 in the morning. It's the same thing. Okay. I have to check into my business at noon and I have one hour to complete X, Y, and Z that gives you tasks, income producing activities in a short period of time, because we're, some of us are moms, some of us work full-time jobs, some of us are in school and we just don't have time to be on here for hours. So that focus work really helped us too. So. Perfect. Okay. So then, um, I want to kind of talk to you. I'm going to flip it a little bit. So obviously for you to be able to go from Ruby to presidential in three months, you had to have like a really big mindset shift. So do you want to talk about a little bit about how you how you changed your mindset and kind of what happened to the thoughts in your mind? So um, I heard somebody say this and it couldn't be more true. If you see somebody whizzing past you, chances are they're not sleeping. And that's the truth because when you have this, like I, when I realized that triple diamond was within reach, it was just this fire that I just can't even describe to you. I mean, Especially because two months before that, I thought I was going to die. Like they told me I had cancer. I didn't know if I was going to make it. My insurance company said, you know, X, Y, and Z. They had told my husband in the, you know, that one year of that medical journey twice that I could die. Like, I think that when you realize it's literally this or nothing, 
and you have to make that decision. And so I just said that I wanted to live better. Like I wanted something better. And that's just something you have to decide. Nobody can do that for you. And I'll be honest, when I was just paid as a Ruby, my $500 a month business looks nothing like what this business looks like. They look totally different. And so to make that decision was just something you had to do um, like inside. And you guys, my husband does not care about this business at all. So he was not a supportive husband. He could give two craps. It wasn't until I actually accomplished triple diamond that my husband was on the phone actually messaging people. Like he had gone through my messenger to help me, but he didn't talk to anyone. So it took him two years to, to get to that point. So some of us, you guys, like maybe, maybe two months ago wasn't your time, but now's your time. You know, you got to make those decisions for yourself. Like Jocelyn can't make that for you. I can't make that for you. It's just, it's in you. Um, but once that fire got going, it was like, um, it was almost like this addiction. Like I saw a goal and I needed to accomplish it. And once I hit triple and I was like thrusted into this totally different world, I was like, man, I, the next month my husband went double the next month after that we went presidential. So it was just, I can't even describe it. It was just this, this, this insane fire. I mean, I didn't even think that this was going to happen. The momentum just kept going and your team feeds off of you. And if you want a miracle, then you need to look in the mirror and you need to be a miracle. You know, like this, this would have never happened if I signed 106 customers in March, like my team, obviously we all benefited off of that, but I had to make a solid decision that I would do something and I was going to, you know, I sacrificed sleep so that I could accomplish that. So sometimes we have to make sacrifices to get to where we need to be. But looking back, like I don't regret it those hours of sleep, like I don't regret losing those. So you just, you, you got to kind of make that decision on your own. So. Okay. So 106 customers in one month. And I know when we were talking, you shared with me the statistics of how many people you had to talk to, to make that happen. So would you mind sharing that with us? Okay. So I know this sounds totally crazy, but um, I actually was, my husband was the one who was interested on how many people I was actually talking to. So every single night he would ask me like, how many new people did you talk to? So he kind of kept track and we tallied it up and it was over 1200 people. I talked to 1200 people in March and I gathered all of those people from all the different ways I talked about, you know, people that, um, you know, customers that hadn't signed people I met in parties, um, people I met at other people's parties. Um, I did do quite a bit of blitzing. I got, I put my it work shirts on. I, I got out of that comfort zone. I talked to people at my office. I talked to the girl at the gas station. I actually like looked up from my phone and talked to the girl at target. Like I just got to know people. So I talked to 12 or a little more than 1200 people in March, 800 plus of them told me, no, I got a lot of screw yous. I got a lot of, you know, people blocking me. I learned really fast that, um, you know, you just, you can't take it personally. I don't cold message. So I know that's going to be a question. I, I'm not a cold messenger. So I had some type of relationship with them. Most of my no's of course were on, were on social media um, just because it's so much easier to say no on social media than it is when you're like face to face with somebody. Um, so obviously 106 of them signed and the rest of those people told me either not now or I'm not ready or whatever, you know, their reasoning was at that moment. And so those group of people obviously spilled over into April and March but um, yeah, so when my team tells me, um, or when a, when a new person signs up and they're like, hey, I talked to five people and they all said no, I'm like, girl, keep pushing, keep pushing, because you know, um, I had to, I believe my husband said that I had to talk to 150 people before one person signed, so. Okay, so uh, then the cool part about that is out of the, the 1,200 people that you talked to in March, wasn't there about a hundred of those people that said that they could, they could sign up or order the next month? Yeah. So roughly, so, um, roughly about hundred ish basically said that they weren't ready or next month or whatever the case may be. So in April we signed 96 customers and a lot of those, I would say about half of those came from the contacts I had in March. So really the, the fortune was in the follow-up. I, I kept on it. I made myself organized and accountable. Actually, my husband made me accountable because he would be like, Hey, you talked to so-and-so cause he would write their name down on like literally an old school calendar. And he'd be like, Hey, you talked to this person. It's been two weeks. Do you want to follow up with them? 
So he helped me be accountable. And so if your husband's not supportive, I recommend that you get yourself an accountability partner. I also have an accountability partner who, who came to me in March and she completely changed the way I looked at things. And it was somebody, you know, who would ask me every single day, what was I doing to, to build my business? And so that, you know, that made me accountable for myself and for my team. So in, in April, a lot of those people that said no or maybe um, came from the people that I talked to in March. And same thing in May. Um, we signed over 100 customers in May too. Same thing. They were coming from people who said um, maybe no in March or I'm not ready or whatever the case is. So a lot of those people were that fortune in the follow-up, even though you know we kept with the consistency. So we're still doing all those parties. We're still doing all those face-to-face. -face. But you know, fortunes in the follow-up, didn't somebody say it takes like seven times before somebody signs? So it's just like, just because they say no once or they say I'm not ready, doesn't mean that they're never ready. I mean, how many of you, just to ask yourself, how many of you were asked by your enroller more than once if you were interested in the business? I mean, most of us, most of us were asked several times. So. Okay. Um, shoot. I had another really good question. Oh yeah. So you talked about how you don't cold message. So will you talk a little bit about how you build relationships with people? So for us, voice messenger has been golden because when you're talking to that many people, you just do not have time to kind of like sit and write everything out. So we use voice message a lot. Um, we also, um, if I was texting them, I have an iPhone. And so on iPhone, like you can have like a separate keyboard where if you type a special word, it will change that word into like a paragraph. And so that also helped us. It's just like being organized. So if somebody was like, Oh, I've never heard of it works. What is it? I would type in, um, like a special, I think my, my husband has it like number coded. So I type in a, a number and then the keyboard automatically, you know, puts in whatever you're going to say. So that helped us a lot too. So those are like some, you know, weird quirky things that we actually took from my upline because um, my enroller does that and she saves a lot of time. So because this business is a numbers business and you know, a lot of us don't have a whole lot of time, we had to find ways to kind of be efficient. Those were efficient. Um, I also used a lot of notes on my um, iPhone. So like if the conversations are going a certain way, I just can copy and paste too. Um, we do the same thing on social media. If conversations are going a certain way, a lot of people are asking the same questions, you guys. And so you can copy and paste your answers are, they're your answers. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, how many times do you get, what's a loyal customer? I mean, you probably get that question like almost every time you talk to somebody. So it's so much easier to just either voice message them or copy and paste depending on where you are. So I think getting organized um, made a huge difference. I definitely wasn't organized prior to this. And so I spent a lot of man hours just responding to people. And, um, you know, time is one of those things that you can't get back. And so you need to use it wisely. So being organized is the key to success. All right. So I'm going to kind of branch a little bit on loyals because I feel I have a lot of team and, you know, sometimes this business it takes a, I mean, this business is a roller coaster. Sometimes you're going to have this, this high, you're going to go one step forward and then a few months later, it's two steps backwards. And that has happened. You know, I think at some point, I think we all lose rank. You know, I look at my 2.0 and I promoted to Ruby in two months and got the $500 bonus and almost immediately after I lost that. And, um, it took me like the people that were on my original Ruby chart, half of them were on my diamond chart. And so, um, let's kind of talk about when, um, when you are, you know, bringing in like these loyal customers and especially with distributors that after you sat for a while, um, what, what was something that you noticed helped those distributors in a sense, like reactivate themselves? Um, I think the consistency, they were just, a lot of them were lost. A lot of them, like they want to be excited and they want to be in this, but they needed more guidance and they weren't getting that, especially not from me. Okay. Most of them were my enrolled, personally enrolled. And a lot of people are like, well, if my personally enrolled isn't there to help me, then I quit. Now, by, what I mean by quit is like, they didn't call and cancel. They just stopped working. And so um, I think that I'm pretty open and honest with my team. I mean, they kind of, they know what they're getting with me and they know that, you know, if, um, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. So if I say I'm hosting a party, they know that I'm not going to cancel it on the last minute. Even if nobody shows up, 
social media doesn't know if no one shows up, you take selfies and you, you know, you say you had the best party ever. Like they don't know. All they know is they missed out on something awesome. So I think re reigniting some of those people. Um, and some of them didn't reignite. Okay. So I think if you're in any type of leadership position, pretty much, I would say diamond or above, even, even an emerald, you know, that there are times when you have to place customers under somebody who's just not working. And I, I have a method to that. Um, I obviously, if I'm, if I know someone's not working at all and they're not canceled, I mean, you, you just have to do what you have to do. And so I think those customer relationships are really important because if you have someone who's on your chart, let's say a 400 box, and you know that they're not working at all, you, and you place customers there, you need to make sure that you are the one staying on top of those customers so that they continue ordering because you don't want to be stuck in a position where you have an empty 400 box. Like I'm not a big advocate of like buying your promotion. Like I'm not, I don't do that. I don't, if my orders are only placed if they are small. You know, I, I'm not, that's not, I'm not an advocate for that. So that means that you had to put the effort in and you got to put the work in. And so, yeah, there were definitely, I mean, there's still people on my chart now who I know aren't working, but I keep those relationship goings with those loyal customers. And so, um, those 400 boxes are taken care of because I make it my responsibility. And so I teach that same lesson to my other leaders. And if they're placing customers somewhere, it's their responsibility to make sure that that volume stays. I mean, also, I think many of us, we stack, you know, and so I think that um, when you get into more of those charting questions, that's something that you work one-on-one -on -one with your upline with or one-on-one -on -one with your sidelines and whoever, whoever it is that you're talking to. So yeah, I mean, there were plenty of people there. Like I said, there's still people now on my chart that are not, um, you know, they're not really working, but I want the dream bad enough. So I will do what it takes to get to it. Right. And I want to reiterate with this too, because I've had this kind of come up, you know, um, I've had somebody kind of ask, well, why would I help somebody get a paycheck when they don't deserve it or they're not working towards it? And I, it's kind of a rhetorical question where I'll turn it back around and I'll say, well, would you rather help somebody make a $40 paycheck at a 400 club so that you can earn a $5,000 paycheck? It's so worth it. You know, um, what you give comes back. And I think that's so important. Um, next question. It's crazy because I had to explain it to my husband because he's like, why are you placing customers under these people who aren't working? I'm like, babe, $60,400 paycheck or $50,000 triple diamond bonus. I mean, is it even really comparable? Yeah. So I get it. Yeah. And I think, you know, because I, I've had that same question, you know, and, or like, this is, this is a story I love sharing. So, um, my friend, you, I'm sure you know who she is, Jay Hooper. Um, when she started her 2.0 team, she was like, you know what, I'm going to try to not place to promote. She's like, I'm just going to keep everybody on my top line and see who takes off. And she did that for a year and she had over 75 distributors on her top line and nobody took off above Ruby. Nobody. But can you imagine if she would have just placed to promote those 75 distributors, she would have almost been triple diamond just by that alone. And so that really goes to show that we can make the sacrifice to help other people get a paycheck because that means that we're going to get what we want in, in return. So um, my next question is obviously when you're messaging people, you've got to have like some sort of like a little bit of an idea of how you're going to like transition from getting to know them a little bit and building that relationship to asking them like, Hey, would you be interested in, in one of these products? So um, you don't have to give me your exact script because I definitely believe that scripts don't work and it's really just finding what works for you. But what were your best selling products? Oh man. Okay. So my best selling products in March were not my best selling products last month. I learned really fast that a $30 hair, skin and nails is not going to get me to triple. <laughs> so, um, and you know, it took me a long time to figure that out. Obviously my enroller had to come in and be like, Hey girl, I know you're sending all these customers, but really like you're offering them one product, like what a hundred hair, skin and nails are not going to get you where you want to go. So like two weeks in, she's like, Hey, um, like, what are you doing? And so, we exchanged conversations um, so that she could see what I was doing. And she's like, Oh my gosh, girl, like you could have, and you guys, I was already a double. So it wasn't like I didn't know how to talk to people. Okay. 
So she was like, Hey, you took, you could have totally offered them this like, or this, and it would have been a bigger package. I think I was too scared because I was coming back into the business and I sort of just maybe still didn't believe in myself. And so I was too scared to ask them to buy something more than hair, skin and nails. I was just so excited and I wanted somebody to sign, which I think we get that same, like our new people get that same anxiety where they're like, I just want to sign a customer. I'll take whatever it is that they want. Like I wasn't asking them questions. You know, I wasn't asking them what they wanted. I looked at them and I prejudged them and I assumed what they wanted. So my conversations that first two weeks of March, um, were totally different. Um, but you know, I would just, you know, I just talk to them and I, I use the, um, I hope I'm not bothering you or, um, I use that a lot. I hope I'm not bothering you with like the little monkey emoji, you know, the, so I use that a lot. And most people just kind of like, you know, they laugh at it. They just, it, it makes it less awkward. Um, or, you know, I would say, Hey, I saw on your, I saw on your post that like one girl or a few girls, you know, I see all over, like they're complaining about their weight or they're complaining about, um, they're pregnant, they're complaining about their stretch marks. And so those types of things obviously make it easier for you to go in and talk to them. But the people who didn't have that, the people who like I met at rap parties, um, most of those kinds of conversations, you know, that weren't happening on social media were actually pretty easy. They just kind of, they're at a rap party. They have a product catalog in front of them. So what I do at a rap party is, um, I also don't know where I got this tip from, but we laminate a few of the product catalogs. We give them a dry erase marker. And we, while we're doing the wrap party, we ask them like, Hey, we're not going to talk about all the products, but if you see something in your product catalog that you really like, go ahead and circle it. Okay. Well that already tells them that already tells me that they've circled something they're interested in. I make a note when people come to my parties, I make them sign in because I do a raffle at the end of the party. So they have to sign in and like the more active they are, the more tickets they get. And then they can, you know, win a raffle for like, you know, two days of greens or whatever the case may be. So when you kind of um, give them some sort of vehicle to tell you what it is that they want, it makes, I guess, the sale so much easier. On social media, I post a lot of those. Um, we're looking for X amount of product testers and this, 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 and this. And like, you know, people list numbers out. So, you know, I just go to them and, um, you know, I just say, oh, I noticed that you were interested in the skincare line or whatever the case may be. So most of the time to transition from like talking to someone and just asking them what they're getting to know them, I usually say, hey, I hope I'm not bothering you, but just by looking at your profile, I thought maybe you would like this or, you know, by our conversation, I, I noticed you like this, but I nearly start all of them with, I hope I'm not bothering you. Cause I think that that's just like, I'm kind of awkward. I'm an accountant. I don't, you know, I never thought I'd be in customer service. So I like, feel like I need this, like this transition. So that's my go-to like transition phase. That's really good. Um, and then I know you probably do the same thing that Christy does and what I do where you're like, okay, what are your goals? And then depending on what they suggest, I always start with like an expensive package or like a bundle of products because worst case, if they say they can't afford it, then you can say, okay, well, let me take a product off. What about this? Do you do that too? So I, you know, and I know what I've heard that a lot of people don't do this, but I ask them for a budget up front. And I think that um, it helps me just be realistic with them. So in May, most of my customers, I would say about, so out of my hundred, about 65 of them were 120 BV or over. So that means that obviously we filled a lot of volume, but that's first. But second, that means that um, I was realistic with a lot of those people. Like they would tell me, hey, you know, I want to lose like 50 pounds, but I have a hundred dollar budget. And I'm like, okay, well, what are you willing to do outside of your products? Because you're not really going to lose 50 pounds on a hundred dollar budget if you don't want to make any sort of like real lifestyle changes. And I don't mean like you know, tweaking your diet. I mean, like you're going to have to get a workout and exercise plan. And, and I was just really realistic with people. I also have a lot of product knowledge. You don't have to. I do think having product knowledge really does help you though. Like if somebody comes to you and they're diabetic, I, I know a lot of us have to get that a lot. And so I think like understanding just general understanding of products and knowing like what not to offer someone who is a diabetic kind of helps out. They make, it makes them feel like you care about them and they think they know what they want and sometimes like they don't you know they like they have no idea so there's that um 
I'm also part of this a blood clot alliance, and so I got a lot of customers from there too because um, when you're on a blood thinner, there's a lot of restrictions in your life, and there's a lot of things that you can't do. And so I got to know a lot of these people. They followed my story, and so I was able to connect with a lot of them and help them find products that have – better a lot of their lives. Well, I'm also in like a, you know, a cancer group. And so a lot of those women, they lost their hair, you know, they did chemo and like those stories really touched me and I wanted to help them. And so I reach out to them and I would say, Hey, listen, I know you're in a really tough spot. I know what it feels like to hear you have cancer. I know what it feels like to lose your hair. And I can't imagine what you're going through. I have this product. I really want you to try it. I think you'll love it. And I actually just got three messages from three of my cancer patient friends and their hair is growing and they were in tears. Like, crying. And so I think sometimes it's just like having that passion to help people, they feel that passion. And so I do, I ask them what their budget is and I'm realistic with them. And so I tell them like, okay, well, you're either going to be on a six month program or you're going to, we're going to need to up your budget a little bit more, or we're going to need to change your lifestyle. And so I think that just being really open and honest with them and not being afraid to tell them that, Hey, that budget's not going to work, or you're going to need to do X, Y, and Z. It's been, it's worked really well for us. I mean, of course, we've had some people who are just like, it's just not there. And then I say, okay, well, you're probably going to be doing, you know, this for six months. And here are some small things that you can do to change your lifestyle. Because you guys, we're not a magic pill. You know, like they're not going to pop some pill and like be super skinny tomorrow. Like it's a journey and you're on that journey with them. So I think that when we, um, like you said, you're building them a package. Like I don't personally sell a lot of systems but I make a system for that person. And I can only do that if I specifically ask them. I always ask them what they're allergic to. I always ask them what their lifestyle's like. I always ask them um, what their eating habits are like. So there are just some things, there's some questions you just have to ask. So I, of course I always ask their budget. Um, I actually ask what they're comfortable spending because when you say comfortable, it doesn't mean that that's the end of their budget. It just means that that's what they would, you know, that's what they're comfortable with. And, and sometimes like, they can stretch it and sometimes they can't. And so, you know, like I said, when, when you have a mentality that's more of like helping them reach their goals rather than making a sale that translates so much better. So, you know, we're in a business where it's about other people. And I say this to my team all the time. My goals are, are like out the window. You know, my business is all about everyone I can come in contact with and what their goals are. And when they reach their goals, I reach my goals. And that means customer or distributor. So I love that. Okay. Um, I think I've basically asked every question that I wanted to. So I'll ask you um, for two kind of things. So um, what, will you please share like something that's on your heart, just some tough love for my team or whoever watches this? You know, so I had a, I had a leadership Zoom with some other girls a few days ago, and um, this has just been like on my mind. I think that... Um, we hear, I know I hear this a lot. I'm sure you hear it a lot too, Jocelyn. People will say, I'm working so hard, but I'm not signing anyone. And I have tried, like I was trying to figure out how to actually help them or how to see what they're actually doing. And so what I started to do is I started to ask them, okay, show me your conversations, send me your conversations. And do you know what I found? Most people didn't have any conversations. That told me, number one, that you're not really working, okay? Posting on Facebook and not following up with anyone and not messaging anybody, that's not working, you guys. Working is layering your business, okay? So um, posting is just a small part of your business. Your business needs components, whether it's live parties, one-on-one, -on -one, conversations. You know, it's more than just posting on social media. And so if you, if you have someone on your team and they tell you they're working so hard and you know, they, they want this or they're so excited. I challenge you to ask them to send you all the conversations that they had the day before. And I will be surprised. Most of them will have nothing to send you. And so that, you know, that gives you an idea of, of, you know, who's kind of like full of it and who just isn't. And so, um, what we do on our team page is I can't hold my team accountable by giving me their conversations if I'm not sharing my conversations. So that's another thing. If you want to be a leader and you want a miracle and you want to do something intense in your business right now, you need to hold yourself accountable. You need to look in the mirror and you need to make the change for yourself. And whatever you ask your team to do, you better be doing the same thing. So if I ask my team, hey, I want to see your conversations, you better believe that I'm posting my conversations. All the ones that I don't use voice messenger, they go on my team page. 
so that my team can see exactly what it is that I'm saying. And sometimes you guys, I make mistakes too. Like I have girls on my team that are like, Oh, Nicole, like, you know, silly, I would have done this or whatever. And I'm human. You know, my husband does the same thing. My husband will post his conversations he has with his male potentials. And so I think that's the biggest thing is this, you know, we are expecting something out of people that are in our downline that we're not willing to do ourselves. And if you're not willing to do it yourself, then it's just not going to happen. So, you know, you, you just got to look in the mirror. You know, I think that we all need to do some serious self-reflection and, um, that's made a huge difference in our business. It's just self-reflecting and knowing that it, I need to hold myself accountable. Like I can't expect, you know, Mary Jo on my team to sign customers. If I'm not talking to people, you know, people do what you do. They don't do what you say. So I think that's, that's the biggest thing when we're coming into leadership positions, we want people to do something we're not willing to do. So I love that. Okay. And leave us with your biggest aha moment. Oh, wow. You know, I should have figured you were going to ask this. <laughs> hmm. Oh, dang it. Um, you know, I think that um, I went to a one team, one mission. My first one team, one mission, I was super pregnant. And um, it was in Salt Lake City with Cami Dempsey and Amber Parker. And being in that event, feeling, I actually, I think you were there too, Jocelyn. There were quite a bunch of you guys there. And I think just seeing all of you guys there, hearing your stories and knowing that like, hey, one day, like I could be up on that stage. I think getting uh, my aha moment is just being at events. You sometimes you need to feel that energy of other people. We, we are in a social media business. And I think sometimes we, cause we're all from all over the place. Sometimes we don't feel that same energy when we're on a zoom as we do when we're in the same room as people. So whatever you can get to, you need to get to, you know, I feel that same. I feel energy when I'm doing joint rap parties with my sideline sisters. Like I, sometimes we just, we need to feel that we need to feel somebody pushing us a one team, one mission, that one team, one mission with Cami Dempsey, I think really, and I needed that in those moments. And then every event since then has given me something and I've taken something away from it that I didn't have before. And so that's my biggest aha moment is I know people beat it into your head to go to events, go to events, but honestly, like go to events, you know, make the drive or, or, um, pay the $15 it's worth it. It's an investment in your, not just your business, but yourself. And, um, you know, I, I think my, my only other thing I would probably say is that, uh, in this business, you still have to cultivate yourself. You know, you're no, you're, it doesn't matter if you're presidential ambassador, or Ruby, you're never too good to work on yourself. And so find something that you can do. I write a lot. Um, I love to read, but I love to write and I write letters to myself or to my husband or to whatever. Um, I write, you know, I just write and sometimes we need that self-reflection. So I think that, um, you guys just don't forget to invest in yourself. Don't forget to fill your own cup because you, your business can't be well if you're not well. So you need to do that. You need to work on you and you need, um, I think that also helps with like that confidence is just, um, sometimes you have to be your own cheerleader, you know, and that's okay. So those are my aha moments. Yay. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. Okay, let me stop this recording.